Now, who's listening to all these prophetic warnings, all these warnings coming from secularists and from evangelists and from pastors all over the world and especially the United States? The nation's leaders are not going to hear it. It never does reach them. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and all the Old Testament prophets warned of the fall of Babylon. They prophesied about the destruction of the Chaldeans, the Medes, the Persians, Tyre. But those prophets' messages, uh, with a few exceptions, never reached them. It's like King Jehudi when Jeremiah sent him a prophecy of coming destruction, took his pen knife and tore it up and threw it in the fire. The haters of Jesus Christ are not going to accept any prophecy that comes from this or any other pulpit on the face of the earth. They mock preachers who give these dire warnings. They say all things continue as they were from the beginning of time. Nothing's going to stop this prosperity. Those who love the world and the things of the world are not going to listen. They're going to turn it off. They don't want anybody to disturb their good times. And I am shocked most of all by preachers and pulpits who despise those who warn of perilous times ahead. We're heading for the falls. We're, we're heading into the, the, the storm of all times. But you don't hear it now. What you hear is God wants you to be rich. He wants you to go first class. Come on, get in on the game. God is speaking, but who's listening? this hill to declare that there is only one God and he is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He's the God of Israel and of all nations. He alone is the rock upon which this nation has come into existence. And from this high place we make this declaration. We will not bow down our knees to Baal. We will not bow down our knees to political correctness. We will not bow down our knees to a morality that as, is as shifting as sand in the wind. We will not bow down our knees to the laws and precepts of rebellion or the sacred cows of moral apostasy. We will not bow down our knees to the idols of man. We will not bow down to Baal. We will bow down our knees only to the Lord our God, come what may, and we will have no other gods before him. For some trust in chariots, some trust in princes, some trust in Supreme Courts, some trust in White Houses, some trust in governments, some trust in Wall Street, some trust in powers, and some trust in idols. But we will trust in the name of the Lord our God, in the name above all names, above all kings, above all powers. We will trust in the only name given by which we can be saved. We will trust to the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the judge of all judges, the light of the world, the glory of Israel, the foundation stone upon which this nation came into existence, and the only answer, the only chance, and the only hope that America has that it might once again shine with the light of the fire of the presence of the glory of the living God and not go to hell. So help us God. Thank you. There is a new shaking coming. The earth is going to move. To bear, move back and forth. Thou hast forsaken me, Jesus. Thou art gone back. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. Greetings, truth seekers, and welcome back to Truth Fed. I'm Sean, and the website is www.truthfed.com. And uh, that amazing audio clip that you just heard came from the most recent uh, TruthShock.tv uh, YouTube channel. And if you're not subscribed to that, if you haven't checked that, uh, check that out. The work there is incredible. Um, it's literally like watching a movie or a documentary once a week or once every couple of weeks when uh, the creator of that channel puts out those videos. So I recommend that you check those out. I typically share them on my Facebook page and things like that. So if you're following me on Facebook, you probably have seen them, uh, but they're just absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, some of those things that David Wilkerson is saying is just so uh, unbelievably prophetic. You know, he makes a comment about, you know, the people aren't going to hear, they don't want to hear what the prophets have to say. They don't want to hear you know, preaching about then preaching and warning about the things to come. And the reason is because they love this world. And I don't have it pulled up right now, but for whatever reason, this is coming to mind. You remember the parable of the marriage supper 
and the king says, hey, go out and, uh, and tell my guests that the, the, the meal's ready and we're ready to start. And, they, and the servants go out and tell the guests, but the guests have all these excuses as to why they can't come. You know, they, one just got married, one bought a field that he needs to go tend to. Uh, in other words, they're white knuckling this world. They've got better things to do than to come to the, the banquet that they're invited to. Uh, which is, you know, these parables, Jesus says, are like the kingdom of heaven is like this. I have this situation where I've invited these people to join me, uh, but they would rather take care of business in the world. They're more worried about the things of this world. They want to go, they got their child's, you know, sporting event to go to. They, they can't be bothered to pay attention to what's going on in the news and uh, what's going on around the world and the prophecies that are being fulfilled before our very eyes. They can't be bothered to uh, watch for Jesus. And then when you tell them, hey, you need, they're just like, well, you know, if he comes, he comes and, uh, you know, that'll be great. But Jesus says that you need to be watching for him. And blessed are those who do watch lest you be caught unaware and unprepared. There's a lot of people out there, they pervert the grace of God. They feel like, they, they feel like there's nothing on their end. And Jesus, how many times does he say, to, you know, all these different things, you know, like deny yourself and take up your cross and follow after me. He who loves his mother and father more than me is not worthy of me. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. If you love me, you obey me. And uh, I'm not going to get into all of that today. That's for a a different broadcast, which I intend to do, uh, because a lot of people accuse me of being a works religion place or a works religion person or a performance person. And that's not it at all. I'm very well of the gospel I'm very well that we're saved by grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. And it's only by his sacrifice that we can be saved. But most people don't go any further than that. I want to live in obedience to God. Jesus says those who break these commandments will be called the least of these in heaven. Again, I'm not going to get into that right now. We've got other things to get into. The point is, is people love this world. And if you tell them they need to come out of their sin, they'll say, no, grace, grace, grace. Jesus is perfectly content with me watching my favorite Netflix show that's just filled with pornography. And I'm sorry, those strong sex scenes where you're seeing nearly everything, where really there's only one more step to go to for it to straight up be pornography. That's pornography, folks. And I really wasn't planning on talking about any of that. What I wanted to talk about was things to come, Mark 13. And we've heard these, you know, people have, you, you've heard all this so many times that it's, that you, it's probably become uh, watered down in our minds. So I'm going to be reading it from uh, the Amplified Bible, Mark 13, which the Amplified kind of helps give more information. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at some Revelation 6, uh, Ezekiel, and, and maybe a few more passages if we have time. But I want to talk about the things that Jesus says are coming. You know, we see prophecy fulfilled, and I'm amazed that people can continue to ignore the things going on. You know, we've, we, you know Israel is a nation again, which is the biggest uh, flag right there uh, that says, hey, pay attention. Um, Damascus, it, it's literally become a ruinous heap. It's, it's gone, folks. It's, it's, it's ruins. Prophecy fulfilled in my mind. People are saying, well, it needs to be nuked. Why? Why does it need to be nuked? It has become a ruinous heap. Um, prophecy is fulfilled. You know, you see the things going on with genetic modification and just, you know, the government systems and just everything that's happening. Persecution of Christians is through the roof, even though it's being completely ignored and blacked out by the media. But there's literally a Christian Holocaust taking place right now. It's a genocide in the Middle East, and nobody's talking about it. All of these things are happening in people in America. because And this is the only people I can 
that I can speak to because these are the only people I see, but I watch them in the churches and in their homes and, and they're just oblivious and they don't want to hear about it. You know why they don't want to hear about it? They love this world more, at least currently anyway. You know, people get on me when I say, uh, you know, you need to cling to Jesus. I'll I'll see comments like, no, Jesus clings to you. You don't need to do blah, blah, blah. And there's a time coming real, real soon in this country. And uh, you're going to understand exactly what I mean by clinging to Jesus. Because you're about to find uh, or you're about to be put in a situation where that is all you have when the comforts of this world are taken away. Let's get into the content that I actually wanted, that I actually came here to talk about. Things to come. It was, he was sitting, and we'll just skip down to verse 3, Mark chapter 13, um, again, amplified for this particular couple of verses. Uh, As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when will these things happen and what will be, this, be the sign when all these things are about to be fulfilled? Jesus began to say to them, be careful and see to it that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name, misusing my name or claiming to be the Messiah, saying I am he and and they will deceive and mislead many. We see that happening already. I mean, we've seen that happening for a long time. The church in America is, wow, I, I just have nothing nice to say. I mean, the prosperity gospel, there's either the prosperity gospel or there's the perverted grace gospel, uh, which says, don't worry, go ahead and live in your sin. You know, Jesus doesn't need to be number one in your life, you know, blah, 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 blah. Maybe they don't say it exactly in those ways, but that's the message that's coming across. They're misusing his name. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed, frightened, or troubled. These things must take place, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. Right now, folks, we have record amount of earthquakes taking place around the world. Not just like, ooh, we beat a record, but like significant increase. There will be famines. There's significant increase in famines around the world. These things are the beginnings of the birth pain, the intolerable anguish and sufferings. All right. We'll just keep going a little bit further. But when you see the abomination of desolation, now the Amplified goes on to say, standing in the temple sanctuary where it ought not to be, let the reader understand that I don't necessarily think that there, ha- I know that one of the biggest things and 99% of prophecy teachers say there, there's going to be a new temple in Israel. And maybe that's true. Uh, but for me, when I think about the, the abomination of desolation that'll take place in our time, you know, when we're told that now we are the temple of God, and I think about this genetic manipulation and the mark of the beast and all these things. There's a part of me that's asking this question, and I'm not saying this is what's definitely going to happen, but I'm asking this question in the back of my mind. Is the abomination of desolation, the desecration of the temple, really the desecration of the human body? Modified? Genetically modified? And remember Jesus said it would be like the times of Noah. I just wonder. Let's move on. Then those who are in Judea, notice that he says where to be. And this, I guess, is a good argument that uh, w- this might be that this might be taking place in Israel. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on his house t- must not go down and enter into his house or go inside to take anything out of his house. Whoever's in the field must not turn back to get his coat. And woe to the women who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. Pray that it will not occur in winter. For at that time, there will be such tribulation as not occurred from the beginning of the cre- creation, which God made until now and never will be again. So Jesus is saying, when you see the desolation, those of you who are in Judea, by the way, he's specifically talking to who? Israel. When you see this abomination, don't even bother to go back for your jacket. Get out of there. Head for the mountains because there's tribulation coming that's like that's worse than anything that's ever occurred ever since the beginning of the creation. Worse than the flood, worse than all of that. And they'll never be that bad again. Excuse me. 
And if the Lord had not shortened those days, the days, it says, has short, had not shortened the days, no human life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, whom he chose for himself, he shortened the days. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, or look, he is there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise, and they will provide signs and wonders in order to deceive. If such a thing were possible, even the elect, those chosen, or those God has chosen for himself. But be on your guard. I have told you everything in advance. You see, but today, if you're on your guard, people say, oh, why, why are you worrying? You must be of little faith. No, I have great faith because I believe that what Jesus said is going to come to pass, and he told me to be on guard. Last couple of verses. But in those days, after the suffering and distress of that tribulation, and I think what we're dealing with here is the birth pangs and the tribulation on the earth, not the wrath of God. Okay, there's, there's a difference. The sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers that are in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and in royal majesty and splendor. And then he will send out his angels to gather together his elect, those he has chosen for himself, from the four winds, and from the farthest ends of the earth, and the farthest end of heaven. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its branches become tender, it puts down its leaves. You recognize that its summer is near. Even so, you too, when you see these things happening, know for certain that he is near right at the door. You know, something that's interesting, you know, Jesus is saying, you know, you could, you know, he even rebukes the Pharisees at one point. You can tell when the seasons are changing, but you can't recognize the signs of the times. He's rebuking them for that. And, and I do this. I rebuke this generation. I rebuke this society. How dare you not recognize the time? I mean, just the ignorance is frustrating to me. Notice Jesus says something. When you see these things starting to happen, know for certain that I'm near, right at the door. He also tells the last church in, in the book of Revelation, when he's talking to the seven churches, he talks to the lukewarm church. Who's the church in today's time? Obviously the lukewarm church. He says, I'm at the door. Everything fits, folks. I assure, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, this generation, the people living when these signs and events begin, will not pass away until these things have taken place. So these things are going to happen rapidly, folks, and we're seeing them happen, which means our generation is not going to pass away before it's all fulfilled. Heaven and earth, as now known, will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that exact day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son in his humanity, but the Father alone. All right, here we go. Here's the command again. Be on guard and stay constantly alert and pray. Have you noticed that if you do this, if you're on guard and you're constantly alert and you're constantly paying attention to this stuff and you're constantly praying and seeking the face of God and praying to be counted worthy to escape all of these things that are coming upon the earth and to stand before the Son of Man, that the Christians around you want to pull you down, tell you you're trying to earn your salvation? They hate it. The reason why they hate it, folks, is because your light shines on their darkness. The reason why they don't want to hear repentance is because they don't want to repent. They like their sin. They want Jesus in one hand and their sin in the other hand. They don't want to talk about the end times because that means that their happy little lives might be interrupted. Man, there's some sorrows coming. There's some sorrows coming. That's going to be such a terrible shock to them, but not of you. You see, you're of the light of the day. You're not in darkness. Be on guard and stay constantly alert and pray. For you do not know when the appointed time will come. This is very important to understand. People think, well, I think this is going to happen first or that's going to happen. You need to just be on guard and be constantly alert. And you need to be praying. You don't know when the appointed time will come. By the way, not my words, Jesus' words. It's like a man away on a journey who when he left his home, he put his servants in charge. We would be the servants. Jesus would be the man on the journey, each with his particular task. <gasps> but we're not supposed to do it. Yes, you are. And also ordered the doorkeeper to, doorkeeper to continually be on alert. Here it is again. 
I mean, how many times does he have to say this? Be on guard, be on alert, be on guard, be on alert. Therefore, be continually on the alert again. But this is the third time in three sentences. You know, in the the when back in these times when they would write, if they used a word uh, like two to three times, the readers would understand that what they are saying is, hey, pay attention to this particular word. As an example, sometimes Jesus would say, truly, truly, I say to you. It's emphasizing. It's saying, hey, pay attention to this. I'm just going to read these two verses one more time. Listen to how many times you hear alert in two verses. Be on guard and stay constantly alert and pray, for you do not know when the appointed time will come. It's like a man away on a journey who, when he left his home, put his servants in charge, each with his particular task, and also ordered the doorkeeper to be continually alert. Therefore, be continually on alert. I'm not even done yet, folks. For you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning. Stay alert, in case he should come suddenly and unexpectedly, and find you asleep and unprepared. What I say to you, I say to everyone, be on the alert. Stay awake and be continuously cautious with an explanation mark. Now that's like five alerts and just three verses, four verses. And that's not counting the alerts that are before that. Jesus is very clear. That number one, you need to be on guard. You see these things starting to happen, be on guard. I'm at the door. You don't know. You think you know when these things are going to come. You think you've got your little timelines and you've got your, you know, you've got it mapped out and we've got your graphs and everything, but you don't know the appointed time. So you need to be continually on alert like a doorkeeper that I've ordered to watch for me. Be on alert because you don't know when the master of the house is coming back. You don't know if it's going to be at evening or midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning. So stay alert in case he should come suddenly and unexpectedly. And doesn't Jesus say, I come like a thief in the night? People think that that means he's going to come secretly. I don't think that's what it means. I think it means unexpectedly. In case he should come suddenly and unexpectedly find you asleep and unprepared. What I say to you, I say to everyone, be on alert, stay awake, and be continuously cautious. Wow. You know, this is the first time that I've read through that like this, you know, while I'm giving commentary. And let me just tell you, I I pray that this show blesses you guys and that you hear it and it pierces your hearts and it causes you to draw closer to Jesus and, and it helps you with your relationship with the father and your understanding about the word of God. And, um, you know, I, I sometimes, you know, I look at my life and I, I look at my failures and I look at the things I struggle with and I'll literally say to God, you know, maybe I shouldn't be doing the podcast. Um, you know, um, first of all, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. Uh, I'm not a prophet. I, I'm just a man. I, I, I'm probably getting a lot of this stuff wrong and I don't want to lead your people astray and then be responsible to you because I made a mistake on the prophecies. And, you know, I've got my own sin and things that I struggle with that I'm dealing with, you know, who am I to do this podcast? And, uh, you know, that's how I was feeling yesterday, to be honest. And I got a, I got an email last night from a listener, um, a email of encouragement, uh, basically telling me, you know, that, that it matters. And, um, you know, I just want to say thank you to those of you who, who do that, who encourage me. Um, you guys have been very generous here recently. Uh, it looks like, uh, you've, you guys have been so generous more than I could ever imagine or deserve, uh, that I'll probably be able to upgrade and replace my computer system that I use to record and edit video and stuff on. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, again, I don't deserve that, uh, type of generosity, but, but I thank you. And, uh, 
you know, so I, you know, I, I, to get back to the point is I, I say, you know, I hope that this blesses you and that it does something for you and that it draw, that it helps you with your relationship with God. But what you guys may not realize is that when I, you, like I have been blessed this morning by this passage in Mark 13, you know, there's something to be said about reading scripture out loud. And, uh, you know, when I, when I'm reading this out loud and I'm doing the commentary, because when I have to read it out loud and I have to stop and do the commentary, I have to stop and think about this. I've read through this several times over the, over the last couple of days in preparing for this message, by the way, this message, this podcast has went in a completely different direction. I apologize for that, but this is, I, I pray every morning, God lead this where you want it to go. And this is where we're at today. Uh, so we'll have to come back for another episode to get into revelation and, uh, Ezekiel and, and revelation seven. Um, but you know, when I have to stop and read, read this and do the commentary, it also blesses me, you know, and I didn't catch how many times the word alert was used from verses 33 through 36 or 37. And uh, so it blesses me just as much as it blesses you. I mean, that's because the word of God is living. It really is folks. It's living. It's being opened up in different ways for different times. You know, the book of Daniel was sealed up till the time of the end and that thing's, you know, being popped open and being understood. The book of Revelation, let me just tell you, when I first became a Christian, I used to read the book of Revelation and had zero understanding. I just couldn't get, how many times have you heard people say, how many people refuse to go and study Revelation now because they still feel like it's, that it can't be discerned. God has opened that book up. He's opening up the scriptures. Do you think it was a coincidence that the Dead Sea Scrolls happened to be found when they were found? Do you think it's a coincidence that the book of Enoch and Jasher and Esdras and some of these extra biblical texts that used to be in our old King James and 1611 Bible, the Apocrypha, are now being opened up and, and, and translated and we're able to, to look at those prophecies and you know, God has given us all the tools that we need to, to know the season. We can't know all these mysteries of God. Some of these things are going to make sense as they happen and will help us discern where we're at. You know, I think uh, um, I'll point one more thing out real quick and then I'll wrap it up. I, I believe that what Jesus is talking about, but in those days after the suffering and distress of the tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon won't give us lights and the star will fall, the stars will fall and the powers of heaven will be shaken and they will see the son of man coming with great power and glory and royal splendor. I think that he's referring to the sixth seal. And let me just show you why. In the sixth seal, what do we have happening? Uh, let me see here. Let me get it to the right translation that I want. We're going to go with New King James Version for this. Revelation chapter 6, um, the sixth seal, cosmic disturbances. And I looked and, I, and he opened the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake. The sun became black. Didn't Jesus say it would become black? The moon became like blood. The stars fell from heaven. The stars in heaven fell to earth. Jesus said that they would f- they would be falling, right? The stars will be falling from the sky. Revelation six says that they'll fall. Um, the star or the stars will be falling from heaven to earth as a fig tree drops its late figs, shaken by a mighty, mighty wind. Then it says the sky will recede as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Jesus said that there would be, uh, and then. Uh, they will see, uh, oh, the powers of heaven will be shaken. Same event, possibly. And then it says that the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the commanders and the mighty men and every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks. And they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. This is the moment when God's wrath is getting ready to be poured out on the earth. People are not confused about it. They know who it is. Then this was the podcast that I was going to do today, but I'm going to have to do it for another time. They know who it is. And even Jesus says, they'll see me. They'll see the son of man coming in the clouds. It doesn't say that he lands on earth at this particular time or anything like that. It just says they will see the son of man coming in the clouds with great pouring with great power and glory. And then he's going to send out his angels to gather his elect from the four winds at the farthest ends of the earth. And then if you go on to Revelation 7 in the next verse, you see, you see four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the sea of the earth or any tree. And uh, that's really all the time we have for this morning. I'm not going to go any further. But, you know, one of the things that we've often thought 
and I'll try to do a podcast to continue this idea, is that, you know, these things that God's plagues are coming on the earth, the wrath's coming on the earth, but people might still be confused, thinking it's just natural disasters and stuff. No, everybody's going to know who's doing it. I mean, we've got angels flying through the sky saying, don't take the mark of the beast, pronouncing the gospel of truth, uh, proclaiming that Babylon has been destroyed. It's very clear. Even in Ezekiel 38, when the war of Gog and Magog happens, what does God say? Thus, this is how he ends it after he intervenes. He says, thus, I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Man, there's some interesting times coming upon us, and some really challenging and dreadful times are here, and it's it's bleeding over into the West, and it's going to continue to get crazier and crazier. And I don't tell you that to give you fear. I tell you that because Jesus warned you to be on guard. Be on guard. I have told you everything in advance. But when you see these things, be on alert and pray. Because you don't know when the appointed time will come. It's like a man away on a journey. And when he left home, he put his servants in charge, each with his particular task, and also ordered the doorkeeper to be continually alert. Therefore, be continually on alert. For you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or in the morning. Stay alert in case he should come suddenly and unexpectedly find you asleep and unprepared. So many Christians today, asleep unprepared. And like the parable, the 10 versions say, you know, those foolish ones, the ones who didn't think ahead, who didn't prepare, who weren't paying attention, they're going to be knocking on the door. Adonai, Adonai, let us in. What I say to you, I say to everyone, be on alert, stay awake and be continuously cautious. That is the podcast for today, folks. I hope it blessed you. If it did, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Feel free to visit me at truthfed.com. That's where I post the archives. Sometimes it takes me a few days to get the archives up on the website, but you can always find the podcast on SoundCloud or on YouTube. If you want to support the mission of truth, you can do that by going to truthfed.com. Peace and grace be with all of you. God bless.